How's it going, guys? Uh, I just hit level 99 in the Endless Delirium event, um, so my build's not going to really change anymore at this point. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of my Cold Snap Vortex Raider. Uh, ladder currently 6th. Um, I've easily got rank 1 on this. I'm still probably going to push it to 100. Uh, I'm kind of racing the other two Ranger classes. Really all that's left for me at this point. Um, but yeah, it's Old Snap Vortex. Uh, using Creeping Frost to apply Bone Chill as well as Frost Blink. Frost Blink is also applying Bone Chill. Um, also got, I got an Enduring Cry. I've got Steel Skid and Orb of Storms applying Despair and Frostbite. And I have Elemental Weakness on Hit. Auras I'm running are Clarity, Vitality, Malevolence, Grace, and I have a Defiance Banner. So I made this build lots of different times. Um, this one being an SSF playthrough, um, of course, presented different opportunities for things. As, like, I didn't, I never, still haven't dropped a Carcass Shack, so I'm running a Six Link Cosprey's Will. Um, before running that, I was running a Diala's Malefiction. Um, Jim Socket and Red Sockets have plus one to level, so this is kind of an upgraded tabula, basically. Um, because I was able to put my Ball Cold Snap and my Vortex in the red Gym Sockets here. I could level my Support Gyms faster, and then Green Sockets get increased quality on things. So when I was running this, I was running Efficacy in the link setup with the Cosprey's Will. I did hit four blue sockets on this and then tried to convert one of the greens to a blue or a white socket with a Verici bench, but that ended up, didn't end up happening. So I stuck with this color setup. So I've got Vortex, Vol Cold Snap Link with Control Destruction, Elemental Focus, Hypothermia, and then Swift Affliction. I don't like running Swift Affliction on this build, but that's what I have to go with. So, like, two, three, and then Vortex is gone with Swift Affliction. But if I have efficacy in here, one, two, three, four, five, before it goes away. So I can get away with, like, spreading my damage out a lot more with efficacy. I just I just prefer that better than the swift affliction. I I don't get as much coverage. And not running a carcass jack doesn't give me the, as much AoE, so the clear's not as great on the setup. But running Cosby's build gives me an additional curse. It also has really good evasion rating, and I'm juicing evasion rating on this. It was me some chaos friends, which is cool. And it opened up the opportunity for me to craft this elemental weakness on hit ring uh, to give myself more damage than I was getting out of the Diala's Malefaction. So we went with that. Um, at some point, I realized that I needed more energy shield um, on gear. And that, that opened up the possibility for me to throw on the Rhyme Gaze as it provides a lot of energy shield uh, because of the Ghost Shrouds. Um, I need enough energy shield uh, to kind of buffer hits as each time I hit, I replenish energy shield um, up to 3% of my evasion rating, which just passively is 38,000 without flasks up. Uh, if I were to calculate this, 38,000 times B, 1,140 energy shield that will be replenished with my passive evasion rating. Um, and I'm currently up to 818, so putting on the Rhyme Gaze gave me a bunch of energy shield. Switching to fingerless, so gloves gave me some extra energy shield as well. Boots still just have a vision rating on them, 
So just life and resistances. Um, you can get influenced boots that give you cold damage over time multiplier, but I I haven't dropped influenced gloves that I could craft. And since I'm running the Cosprey's and the Prime Gaze, I needed resistances. So I got a bunch of resistances on here. Um, also, like this Ellie uh, Weakness ring kind of cuts into available resistances as well. As this ring is just life and resistances, intelligence. My belt's pretty bad, um, but it has high life on it, has a little bit of strength that is needed, um, and open suffix for cooldown recovery rate because I don't have the helm enchant or vortex cooldown recovery rate. Uh, that is the best thing for clear speed that you can get on this build, is Vortex cooldown recovery rate. Um, you can also get damage, you can get cold snap damage and other things, but my my trips through the lab didn't yield me anything. I think I did nine trips. Um, two with twice enchanted. Never got anything usable for any skill that I'm using. I hate it. Absolutely hate that. Um, so... Shield. Shield has life resistances. Um, chance to avoid ailments. Um, it's on a spiked shield, so uh, it gives some implicit spell suppression. Evasion ES base um, isn't the best for damage, but like the idea was I'd hit spell suppression on this as well, and that would open up a little bit more things in the tree, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, but a big thing that I wanted for this build was chance to avoid elemental ailments on a piece of gear. Now, being a raider, I get 50% chance to avoid ailments. Um, getting this shield opens up some passive tree stuff. Anything else you need to go over here? Um, amulet. Amulet's life resistances with a lot of intelligence. Intelligence is pretty needy in this build. Uh, depending on the wand that you're using. Um, wands are intelligence intensive. And I'm using a tornado wand. Because I had the intelligence to do so. Um, usually have to use a lower level wand base. That doesn't have as high of an implicit spell damage modifier on this build. Um, but plus one to all cold spell skill gems. I alt rolled that. Um, I hit it. Augment Regal. I then had to annul lightning damage off as a suffix, which worked, uh, thankfully. Then I could multi-mod cold dot multi and spell damage, uh, making this pretty much the best you're going to get in SSF um, without some really extensive means. And then exalted mana on this. So another thing about this, the way this build has turned out, I have mana on almost every piece of gear you got mana on the wand the gloves the belt this ring uh there's mana on this ring with some life regen that i crafted like i could exalt this and get another i mean there's no prefix that is going to be useful other than maybe energy shield it's going to hit some flat attack damage uh, there's mana on this amulet there's mana on my shield and there's mana on the rhyme gaze so i'm up to 1828 mana um, this build, like, a, this 5-linked level 20 cold snap costs 96 mana to use. So it's pretty ridiculous in the mana consumption, and with Vortex being instant cast, like, I can drain through that 261 unreserved mana really quickly. Um, and then my clarity here is level 21, so... Like, that was the second thing I leveled because, like, the mana regen is needed is pretty insane. Especially when you're, like, spamming down. Like, I can drain my mana spamming down Creeping Frost because it's in the helmet. Uh, with Unbound Ailments, Bone Chill, Arcane Surge. So I'm kind of spamming this all over the place to get Arcane Surge up. That gives me spell damage boost and increased mana regeneration rate. Um... Uh, what are the links I got here? I got my Frost Blink, Link with Unbound Ailments, and Bone Chill. Um, I didn't quality this because duration of ailments doesn't matter because it's chilled ground. Uh, 
chill duration on bone chill as well doesn't matter because if it's since it's chilled ground these areas are going to chill no matter what increasing the duration of the chill isn't going to matter um, it's not going to increase the duration of the chilled ground so i don't need to scale those that's why i didn't quality these gems um my over storm is here it's linked with hex touch frostbite despair despair quality to really good quality uh frostbite quality freezes on cursed enemies have increased duration i'm not freezing anything um down here's my malevolence my grace my vitality my steel skin um i threw in my defiance banner and my enduring cry and then my third i used to have second win linked to my enduring cry so i can have two uses of it um it, I, I mostly just use it as an extra life flask because it regenerates so much and it also gives me the endurance charges against bosses and things but that's what we got there i think that's everything um flasks i've got an increased recovery rate eternal life flask um with corrupting blood immunity this flask recovers 2621 life over 1.2 seconds um, I don't have a way to like damage myself to show that, but it it skyrockets because like as we'll jump into the passive tree here, profane chemistry increased life recovery from flasks. Um, it doesn't show it on the flask itself, so just the like base of the flask. So this 30% increased life recovery from flasks is a 30% more multiplier on that 2,621. But here's increased life recovery from flasks. Here's increased life recovery from flasks. Herbalist over here. Increased flask recovery rate. So that lowers the 1.2 seconds. Um, there as well. So the flask regenerates 50% more. So another 13. So it's like almost 4,000 life uh, regen in whatever 30% less of 1.2 seconds is. That's pretty nuts. So the flask is almost like an a instant flask, basically, and it can almost fully heal me. Um, my other flasks are gain charges when you're hit by an enemy. On all three of these flasks, the Stib Knight, the Jade, and the Granite. On these, I have chance to avoid being stunned. I've got cast speed. Cast speed is only really useful because the cast speed on old snap is insanely high. Um, 0.54 seconds with like stupid scaled onslaught. Um, it's like the highest cast speed of any skill, or like it's like the lowest cast speed of any skill in the game. Also, like the highest mana cost of any skill in the game. So, you really have to build around that. Um, back to here. Oh no, we're talking about flasks. So that's what the cast speed is for. And then I have block and stun recovery. So if I do get stunned, I get out of that quicker. And my Quicksilver has reduced charges per use. Um, and reduced effect of curses on you. 61% is what I have on that currently. Really nice. Now I used to have a granite that had 7% or 7 charges when you're hit. And since we're not dodging spells, we're expressing spells, if you, get, you can get hit by spells um, and then regenerate these flash charges. Um, and this is the first time I've ever gone the route of using any of the flask enchantments. And I'm having these flasks reuse themselves at the end of the flask effect. So like this one, uh, once this flask runs down, it will... Just automatically reuse itself now i used to have like i was mentioning reduced effective curses on a gain charges when you're hit flask but i found out once i went this route of the reuse at the end of the flask effect that the quicksilver flask was turning off my granite flask so that's why i switched to block and stun recovery um hitting evasion rating would be cool hitting armor on a suffix would be cool but it takes a lot of time to craft these flasks um so yeah 
Massive Tree. Um, I started leveling this build as Chaos um, Dot, Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, leveling through here um, for Aspect of Evil, and then I pushed up for Wasting, pushed across here um, for Entropy, Chaos Damage, pushing myself up here to Atrophy, basically. That um, kind of opens, gets you through the game because you can't get the skill gems as a raider. So I pushed to Blood Aqueduct. I farmed a tabula. When I got the tabula, that's when I switched to Cold Dot at level like 77. But let's let's kind of just walk through everything I've got here. Um, so once I switch to the Cold Dot, I switch out of all this projectile damage that scales the cost Carrow um, down into all this evasion. Um, because this evasion is really useful. Um, I grab this Primal Spirit for the strength and intelligence. I really don't care about the mana. The flask effect is cool. Um, but I need the strength and intelligence. That's the only reason I'm getting this. Um, here you get chance to avoid being stunned. Life, life regen. We used the life flask recently. Um, this chance to avoid being stunned is cool as well. Kind of stacks with the chance to avoid being stunned on the Stib Knight Flask. Really nice. Early on, I was pathing through these nodes for spell suppression until I could get it all worked up. But eventually, I broke it off. You get down here for Flash Freeze, increased effect of cold ailments. The way Bone Chill works is enemies take increased cold damage. Um, factored by the chill effectiveness. So increasing the effect of chill, and since chilled ground always chills, with the frost blink, the cold snap, the creeping frost, is always chilling. So with that, increasing the cold of effect of cold ailments is boosting that. So this is extra cold damage. What I've got here is curses. On enemies in your chilling areas have 15% increased effect. So I'm running three curses. That's 15% increased effect on all of those. Really nice. So this is one of the last things I got down here. And doubling back to my shield. I don't have to get crystal skin and all of these nodes in order to get ailment immune with my ascendancy. Um, Avatar of the Veil. 50% chance to avoid elemental ailments while phasing. So, what this does, this is 20% chance to avoid elemental ailments, and this is 10, but up here is 20% chance to avoid being shocked. This is avoid chance of being chilled and frozen, and this is chance to avoid being ignited. That does not make you 100% chance, or 100% chance to avoid brittle, sapped, and, um, Scorch. But going the route I did with the shield, with the chance to avoid and getting these three nodes here, I now am a hundred percent chance to um, avoid ignites, chill, freeze, shock, brittle, scorch, and sapped. Um, one of the only places in the game that scorch, brittle, and sap show up is in the delirium, and this is delirium everywhere. Leap. So that's why I went that route. And then one of the last things I got, like around like level 95-ish, is I came down here and was able to get Graceful Assault. This uh, boosts my Onslaught effect, gives me increased armor and evasion during Onslaught. And I have permanent Onslaught being a raider. But the big thing is gain 5% of evasion rating as extra armor. I don't have any armor on any of my gear at all except for the nine on my belt. Um, so if I took this off, I would have nine armor. But because it's scaling off my evasion, which is 38,000 unbuffed, I have 24% physical damage reduction, um, 1,900 armor. And that helps a lot. That's that's a lot of, like, that's, a, that's an extra granite flask, 1,500. But I get increased 
evasion rating off the jade flask and off the stib knight flask and i'm running the granite flask so with everything up i have 51 percent physical damage reduction without endurance charges uh, largely because of this mastery right here really big and i got the strength because it needs strength because uh, I didn't get it on the gear because I got intelligence on the gear. Um, okay. Bring back up. I got intuition here. Evasion rating life. Spell suppression. Really nice. Herbalism is life. Got a flat 50 life. And then pathing up here. The, the inveterate node gives you a additional prevention of suppressed spell damage. And I'm preventing another 2% of suppressed spell damage on the mastery there. So with, with this node here um, and these nodes along with 40% suppressed spell damage that I have and I've got another 10% on full life. I don't need these nodes up here, uh, but I don't have any spell suppression on my gear at all. Other than the shield. And plus it. Um, a lot of other builds will need to really spec into that. But. Um, I'm at 100% chance. To suppress spell damage. And that damage is re reduced by 55%. Really helps keep me alive. But it also allows me to purposely get hit by spells. On occasion to refill my flasks. Which is pretty cool. I, I do that quite a bit. Next, moving on up. Now, I originally was kind of pathing through here. Um, I flipped this at some point, um, especially once I got the, like the level twenty gems, level twenty one vortex going on. Um, here, I got the life and vitality, made a res reservation efficiency. Um, but I, I needed ghost dance, ghost dance up here. Ghost dance replenishes. Energy shield, like I mentioned. Um, I don't have enough energy shield to uh, fully buffer that. Still, I've honestly thought about getting Soul Thief um, for an extra evasion and energy shield. And I can get energy shield per 8 evasion on boots. Give me some extra energy shield there as well. Um, but, get Mind Drinker. This is where I get my clarity has 100% increased and a reservation efficiency. Um, really have to scale the reservation efficiency to make all this stuff fit in. Up here, Season of Ice, Hold Dot Multi, Increased Effective Chill. Here, Hold Exposure, you inflict applies an extra minus 5 to Cold Res. So, we went back down the Ascendancy. This note here, nearby enemies have Fire, Cold, and Lightning Exposure. Oh, you have phasing applying a minus 20 to those resistances. That node or that mastery raises this to 25. So they're minus 25 resistances just passively um, from taking this mastery on a raid. You have to apply cold exposure on something like an occultist or trickster. So I'm in up here. I have Whispers of Doom. Whispers of Doom. I, I got before this chest while I was still using this chest. Um, that allows me to run Frostbite and Despair. Um, I could get a Mastery here to hinder enemies, but I'm already slowing them enough with Chill Effect that I really don't need that. But I do need the additional Curse. So coming down here, this is all life. And Strength here is needed. Uh, it's really only needed to fully level up the Enduring Cry and the Steel Skid. I really like these. Uh, this is just an extra like buffer on damage. 2,209 damage this can take. Um, and it grants immunity to, to bleeding. Um, so I don't need to always have my flask up to... If I get hit with a big bleed, I can get rid of it with Steel Skid. I really only need the... Uh, bleed flask corrupting blood. So these notes here hold damage, snow forged, enemies ignited or chilled by you have minus five to elemental resistances. So I'm chilling all these enemies. Um, so that's an extra minus five to cold res, 
which is huge, which I'm, I'm lowering a lot. And then the master here I got is 15 to all res, um, which really opens up gear a lot. The resistances are sitting at 107, 107, 123. Um, which is pretty solid. Solo self found, so like, I don't have the best boots. Um, but 22 chaos res is also really nice. Not having this. I'm just under elemental weakness capped. So, keep that in for now. Okay, growth and decay. Um,. I really like this top node. 0.8% of life regen per second for one point. It's really nice. Um, but um, we took the bottom out for the damage. Get 1% life regen here. And another 0.4 here. And on the mastery on this one, plus 10% to damage over time multiplier if you've killed recently. Um, so extra damage there. Coming down here, I need this for the intelligence. The mana regeneration rate's good. And here is increased effect non-damaging ailments and more damage. Increased effect non-damaging ailments, like I mentioned with the bone chill, uh, makes this really valuable. Well, there are more nodes you can get. You can get increased effect of ailments on Fingers of Frost right here. Another cold mastery. Um, and you can also come up here and get Breath of Rhyme. Uh, you can get more cold dot multi along here. Um, big effect of cold ailments there. Um, takes two silvers to anoint as well. The anoint I got, though, was Acrimony. Uh, plus 15 damage over time multiplier. Because I don't have damage over time multiplier on my amulet or my gloves, um, it seemed like a good middle ground to take that there. I normally, for a cheap anoint, end up getting Divine Judgment because it's big damage. You're scaling most of your damage through Chill Effect and Cold Damage over Time Multiplier. You're not scaling as much like increased Cold Damage. So that's 50% increased Elemental Damage over here um, from Divine Judgment for only one Black Oil, essentially. Um, really helps a lot. But last little wing here. Got Strength here because that's needed. Um, get this uh, for the life and evasion rating, but also the grace mana reservation efficiency. Um, allowing me to run everything here. And I have to get charisma and the mastery here is increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. Now, because I got so much mana, I did not have to grab these two nodes for this 8% mana reservation efficiency to run the Defiance Banner. The only reason I'm running the Defiance Banner is because I got so much mana. Uh, that it opened that possibility. So pushing down here. Actually, I'm going uh, to see what this does. So there's a mastery here I can get on this. Because this is the rest of my spell suppression. Coming across here with a bunch of flat evasion here as well. Um, there's a mastery here. 100% um, increased evasion rating from your body armor. So that up this to 41,000 gives me more physical damage reduction from the conversion and everything. Um, but with my flasks up, like I, I really don't know that I need it. I'd rather have the life buffer. But I just wanted to show that off. Uh, I mentioned the profane chemistry. Here's an extra in all res and like more evasion rating and armor right here. Uh, push up here for the life. And then you want to get iron will. Iron Will gives a bunch of damage. Um, it doesn't really show up there. You have to look at this tooltip down here. I'm doing 119,000 cold dot per second on its tooltip. It doesn't it doesn't show the dot damage in the tooltip in the character screen for some reason. Uh, being a dot skill, you would think it would it would be in here. Um, but if I take this off, drops it to 1,101. So it's not the most effective because I'm not scaling too much, but extra 8,000 damage 
uh, roughly like 7% more damage I have in this. And I normally come up here and get Dynamo for my Clarity Reservation. But since I really went with the Ghost Dance setup instead of the like, AoE nonsense, uh, Mind Drinker just works better. You also get the 2% mana on kill, which is really nice. And that is the skill tree on this. The like last thing, like I didn't mention the Avatar of the Chase. This is all your permanent onslaught, increased onslaught effect, and 10% more chance to evade attacks during onslaught. So, bunch of evasion there. Permanent phasing is amazing. Increased elemental damage. Um, Avatar of the Veil is really what makes this build even playable. Um, with the the exposure really opens up the possibility of running cold on the raider and you can run really fast because of that so now to show let me run a map here um i guess i should quickly mention the helmet chant vortex cooldown recovery speed i did finally get one dropped um and i could be running a es like full es shield this one gives me plus one cold spell skill gems with the avoid ailments. I can put this on, cut the life, um, but I'm also trying to get a demi in this event, so I'm not doing that. You can also get big cold damage or spell damage on these. Um, you can you can get a bunch of damage out of a shield, whereas I'm just kind of boosting defenses. There's all of that. All right, so not much left for me to do. Um, push into level 100. Uh, my Atlas is kind of a mess uh, because the Delirium level is set to a specific point in all of these maps. So I particularly like picked out like maps. I'm not going to complete this map because the Delirium is too high. So I could just get um, nice maps to run. Um, and... I farmed a lot of Lyra Arthane T11 to 13 maps to get a bunch of master missions. I've run out of Nikos. I've run out of Junes. The only thing I have left to do is Alva missions. And then my plan is to run all of the banked up uh, Temple of Vansawaddles that I've got. I'm kind of trying to scale these for XP. And then I'm going to go run heists to finish off the level 100. Just been banking these for a while. I got lots of tunnels. I got lots of laboratories. Good stuff. Um, as I mentioned, only thing left is my Alva missions. Uh, and right now I have areas contained two additional abysses. And passives I got here are the Alva ones that give me extra boost from that. Uh, but I can't get this past my head. Um, but abyss monsters give 100 or 50 percent increased experience uh business spawn 100 percent increased monsters scarabs um, cause business to spawn increased monsters and fields is only like 20 percent like i know i have it here like i have a spreadsheet like of all my maps as i was fields is only 19 percent delirious um so it's a nice map they're nice and open i'm not gonna get caught in a corner like a cells um, Cells is only 25% Delirium. Arcade is... Here's Arcade. 21%. So, solid maps that aren't, like, too terribly difficult. Um, but I could easily run, um, like, 80% Delirium. E16 map, fairly solid. Um, so, I'm not trying to do that. It's not efficient for XP game. So, let's... Um, let's not do the Nemesis one. Let's not do the Beyond one. Um, we'll throw an additional abyss in there, and then we throw Alva on this quality. Got sextants going. Show you how it actually plays. Now I did mention as well, like the duration with Swift Affliction. Um, 
compared to efficacy. Um, the duration affects my Volk Hold Snap. The Volk Hold Snap doesn't last as long, but it also recharges faster. Um, there's not as much uh, full game prevention on it. Okay, and there's an Abyssal Depths. I will do that later. Right, clear the map. Uh, it still feels awkward to me with the flasks that are just like auto using themselves. And if this wasn't Delirium, um, I would be running beyond on these, but uh, everything being Delirium is kind of makes this pretty chaotic. But this being an AoE build, that's a Soul Taker. Don't need that, but cool, I guess. But I, yeah, like I was mentioning, it's, it still feels awkward not using my flasks. Like the, the flask enchantments have been around for a, a league or two now. And it's the first time I've actually like gone the route of using them. I'm, I'm so used to like particularly deciding when my flasks are up. Um, but I guess like for this like XP farming where I'm just trying to farm as many monsters as possible. Uh, kind of helpful. I'm not going to get caught with my flasks down unless I'm completely out of flasks, and I normally know that when that's happening. Um, but really good XP out of these abysses. It could be it could be a lot more like throwing the beyond on here. It's probably the best XP in the game right now that's not pure breach stones or five ways. Is um, running these abysses with beyond. Alright, still got the incursions to set up here. Now, I, I'm 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 really happy with my like plan to like try these alvas. Um, I don't want to lower resistances. I'm gonna swap this to the monolith left in here. You get pretty good XP out of these as well when there's all magic monsters in them. Uh, though the Atlas passive got dropped 33%. Guardians dead. Massive blue packs just like all over this room. Uh, this temple is still early. Um, the thing is that I'm looking for out of these temples um, for XP. It's, it's actually really good XP. If you can get a toxic grove you put at Ziri in your temple. Um, I think the guard house is the one that increases pack size, and then you can get the minion rooms. Um, adds extra monsters as well. Just imagine how crazy this map would be with Beyond for like experience gain. Uh, Beyond bosses though like start spamming these effects all over the place. It's the delirium. Kind of chaotic. So many simulacrum splinters. Now I normally wouldn't kill this boss, but I'm gonna do it since I'm recording this. It also seems that we've got cold effects. There's four kinds of delirium effects. Um, there's cold, there's physical, there's lightning, and there's fire. Um, 
they're going to be excited for the whole map pretty much there's like three of each of the different types this one's got glaciator so it's going to spawn this cold degen ground i guess this map has increased area effect on it because aoe is massive Simulacrum splinters. I've got like 14 simulacrums. I was picking up the simulacrum splinters for so long. Right, two more of these. Okay, this is. So I can switch this to a guardhouse, which increases pack size, which is what I want. But this is also adds additional minion monster packs throughout the temple. I'd rather upgrade this. I'm pretty sure this upgrades twice because of my passives. So I'm going to take the right side on this one. See, I've got the Poison Garden in here. I've got the Hall of Lords, increased magic monsters. So you get a tier 3 Poison Garden. Every single little like poison thing is going to spit out little insects. And that's the best you can get. Um, and if you can stack that with all the other stuff, the increased magic monsters, the pack size, and the minions. Ooh, that's, that's an amazing amazing xp temple uh, i actually did some testing on it earlier on it's it's the xp game gain in there is pretty comparable and all the side content in the game like delve um safe houses and stuff is not affected by delirium in this event so it's pretty cool Passage. This one didn't have the magic monsters, so this one quicker. I uh, didn't quite make it to one percent. All right, explosives room. We get tempests or explosives. We'll take the tempests. I think I'm probably the only person in this league that's kind of going this route. Most people are either risking the beyond over here with the abysses um, or just farming delve and syndicate hideouts, but you gotta farm the master missions, which is a real pain. Syndicate hideouts are probably like really good XP. It's just spawning them is a pain. Take a lot of maps. Alright. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. Alright. There's that. Um... Uh, Grab the last little bit here. Simulacrum splinters like crazy. Got an abyssal depths that I still need to do. Now this is just without without delirium, like I don't even need the cold snap. Just my five link vortex with my setup, like, can kill everything. You, you um, like, I don't. I'm not even getting all the curses down. The damage is really good on this build. Like the the like true end game of this is to get. You you just want to like kind of blast around, with um. Uh, Cross blink vortex. That's why you want the um, cooldown recovery rate. Because if you're hitting enemies with frost blink, it refreshes your cooldown really fast. Um, but you also kind of need a staff for that too. Full cold snap, and this thing will just go. Yeah, if I if I could get one of these sockets to be blue, which I have been looking in um, harvests, 
uh, but haven't found it. If I can get one of the sockets to be blue and swap back to uh, efficacy, like yeah, I can clear half a map with a carcass jack and a vault cold snap on an occultist. Like you just zoom through everything uh, if you have enough damage. Um, just to like really showcase the limits of this, me something crazy. We'll, we'll we'll put it we'll take it to the flooded mine. Else, yeah, let's, let's, I'm gonna make this blue because this is 100% delirium. Fine, fine. You want beyond beyond elemental weakness? Fine. We'll 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 see what this looks like. So this would be like putting five delirium orbs on your map, 100% delirium, like simulacrum wave 20. Uh. 100% delirious. Oh, wonderful. Okay, at least I spawned it that. Oh! Oh, no, 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 no. We don't need to lose XP right now. I can't move through this map. What is going on? So this is a little bit more tense of a situation. Um... Being 100% delirious. Uh, but this build is built right now to survive. It's not built for maximizing damage. It doesn't have cluster jewels. It doesn't have all the damage on the tree. Uh, but it can kill this stuff. It can get through this map. I could go kill that boss. It would take forever. Um, but the boss is also really easy to dodge all of its attacks. I'm getting like a 27% chill on things too. That's like 27% less action speed. Makes it really easy to manually dodge things when necessary. I didn't think I'd clear this much of this map, but it's actually like doable. So may maybe I should run my simulacrums. That that could be a lot of XP. Oh yeah, here we go. This is a mess. Like the greater harbinger thing. I really don't want to die here. So I've also like killed my mouse this past month with all these events. I destroyed like bot pave mice playing Path of Exile the history of playing this game. I've never really had hand issues, but I've, the, the mice don't make it. So yeah, this is insane. Um... Kind of, kind of showcasing the defensive nature of the build, though. Uh, it is, it is pretty defensive. I'm also like spawning beyond stuff. And there's a reason why I set my atlas up to not have, not be dropping these maps all the time. Um, yeah, hundred percent delirium is pretty insane. But with a staff and an all's uprising, you can... Oh, there's a Kosas. We don't need to mess with that either. A staff and an all's uprising, you could, like, get six times this damage. Um, if you planned everything correctly. Like, if I wanted to go fight Cirrus right now, since Cirrus does all spell damage, I could turn Grace off, throw on Hatred instead, get 20% more cold damage just for the Cirrus fight. And... Serious is kind of a joke compared to this nonsense. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for this. Um, I, I think that was a pretty, like, all-encompassing kind of showcase of the build. Um, if there's anything that you're curious about that I didn't mention, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, and that's going to do it for me.
Cheers.